Okay, so here is my design for doing a score bunny cosplay. So the basic plan here is I will make the ears and the tail out of yarn. I have the wig already ordered and it's going to be kind of dyed with um, Copic marker ink. I already have the colors as well as a uh, mix with rubbing alcohol and then that's going to be distributed with, this, with a spray bottle. I'm going to style it afterwards. Um, I'm going to get a sports bra and then a pair of white short athletic shorts and then I'm going to take acrylic paint mixed with water or something to kind of just paint on the details because they're pretty basic. Get some thigh high socks and paint those details on. Get some sneaker wedges and then of course paint the details on and yeah probably make some scrunchies because it's not that hard but yeah so my idea for score bunny is to do because so far what people have gathered from it is it's gonna of course it's gonna be athletic pokemon people think it's gonna be soccer based so i'm gonna do like a soccer kind of mood with it i'm kind of doing a not necessarily a sexy version but it's not gonna be not sexy you know what i mean it's gonna be cute but it's not gonna be overtly sexualized like i'm gonna get i'm gonna i want the short shorts i want the you know sports bra that kind of thing like that it's gonna be appropriate for conventions but still gonna have that kind of like cute sexy vibe I guess so yeah but yeah that's the b basic idea for doing score bunny I am going to try to finish this uh, for SoonerCon here in Oklahoma it is a small convention held in Norman and that'll be happening around the first weekend or second weekend of June around I think around June 6th and that's when I'll be wearing it. I'm only going to go for one day. So if any of you are from Oklahoma and you're here and you're around, you know, come come say hi. But yeah, I got a few other friends that are planning on going. And yes, don't mind all the grossness on here. That's from my cats. They get their feet muddy and because they go outside and then they track it all over everything. And I'm like, really nice, thanks. But so yeah. <laughs> Now what we're going to do is we're going to start painting the clothes, the details on them at least. I have a pair of white shorts, I have a sports bra, and I have the socks. These will all be painted with watered down acrylic paint. I had the two different colors. I have more of a yellowy, um, orangey golden color and then the just more pure orange color. I have my reference picture here to kind of help me guide on what I need to do, what I plan to do. Um, yeah, and I also got chocolate milk because I need that, you know, I, I get thirsty. And then I have some cardboard because I'm going to cut it and then just set it on there and allow it to dry that way so it's not sticking to itself. So yeah, woo! Got paintbrushes, got water, got scissors, got more paintbrushes if I need them. And yeah. In my computer because I got to have something to entertain myself. <laughs> So I've been painting different pieces um, to get the colors I want and it, the method I'm using is just using like watered down acrylic paint so that way it kind of like soaks in and stains. It's working pretty well with this because it's stretched out and it won't like break up and it's more of like staining this while on the band here it's staining but here it's not doing well and it's actually getting pretty crusty so I might try to like wipe a lot of this off because I'm having to do more and more pigment on it so that's why I'm having to do it thick but it's getting crusty and gross so what I might do is I might just head to the local global get a t-shirt or something that's in a similar color as this and then just cut into strips and then like either sew the strips together and like just sew it on here 
because that might be the best solution because it's a bit stretchy or try to go to like Hobby Lobby or something and get like an elastic kind of material. Um, it's working out kind of well with the socks there is on the back of this one it kind of bled a little bit and I'll probably either cover that with white paint or try to remove it. I did get a little bit of orange paint here and I'm going to try to remove that with like acetone so hopefully that will work and then I'm going to probably cover this up with something. I might just stitch something on there to be cute. Who knows? But yeah, that's so far on that. So this method worked really well on just white, but it doesn't work very well on any other kind of like material because since it's so dark you can't just stain it so I'm gonna try to remove it the best I can without making it bleed everywhere and yeah okay so I'm doing something a little bit different with the cosplay the sports bra thing was just not working out I didn't see it really going through which is putting sewn material in there unless that material was stretchy enough and I didn't really think what I was using was going to be stretchy enough without going out and getting like a nylon fabric so I am changing a little bit and the top portion is not going to be a sports bra altered it's just going to be a plain white cropped t-shirt that's gonna be form-fitting with some details on the side like the little band things if you know what I'm talking about it's not gonna have any paint on it it's just gonna be sewn it's gonna be a quick thing I might put the stripes on the side who knows I sure to hell don't I'm just kinda winging it as I go along but yeah I just bought a five dollar shirt from Target and I think that's pretty good cuz I spent less on this than I did in that freaking sports bra off of Amazon so now I'm left with that sports bra I might try to wash it who the fuck knows? I don't know. I don't know anymore. But this is what I'm going with. So, yay! So here's what I'm doing with the shirt. First off, I have taped some tape right here. This is about how much space I'll be taking up on here. Yeah. I marked it in areas which I'll cut off. And I'm going to peel this off. Okay, now that I peeled it off, I'm going to stick it on some paper. Yeah, random... Now I can draw better to what I want and make a pattern. Okay, so I cut out the pattern for it and now I'm gonna use this color and cut out two pieces using this pattern. It's pinned, it's cut, I've repeated and now I have two pieces. All right, next part, I'm gonna alter this pattern by putting, like a, just cutting out a section of it and by doing so and making it even as possible, we gonna be using a ruler. New basic pattern. Now it's cut out. It's pinned, but this time I fold it over, so I do two cuts at the same time. Ooh. Now, bam! Two pieces. All right, next thing I do is I'm gonna press it. Here it is all pinned. And I'm just kinda putting the iron in between the pins so I don't melt the plastic heads. Okay, this is what it looks like, all flattened out and whatnot, and now we're going to do it to the other. Alright, here's what the other one looks like pinned. It is a mess. But we're going to put it down anyway. Aha, now they're both pressed. And now I'm going to put this one on top of this one, and we'll stitch them on. Okay, here's what it looks like kind of sewn together. I have pinned it onto the shirt. I'm just going to hand stitch it onto the shirt because it'll just be easier because it's hard and difficult. Yeah! Okay, here's the shirt! Yay! So I mostly just glued it down, not gonna lie. I think I started stitching one of the sides. Yeah, I started stitching this one and I didn't care for it. So I just used fabric glue and that's working. I may go back and do a little bit of edge stitching. Not a lot, but just a little bit, just kind of keep it in place. So yeah, shirt, woo! <laughs> Okay, so I'm about to work on the socks, and how I'm going to do that requires me to saran wrap my legs. Yay. So you might be wondering, why do I have my legs saran wrapped a little bit with a sock over it? 
Well, that is because I'm going to take these strips right here and I'm going to glue them on um, and do a little bit of stitching on them. So that way they stay on pretty well. And I wanted to do it around my leg so that way I'll know if, you know, where to put it in. It'll look good. Um, I have this fabric. It's a little bit stretchy because it's more of a knit fabric, but it's not super stretchy. So I needed it around my leg to make sure it fit properly. As well as since I'm going to be using fabric glue, I don't want the fabric glue to stick to my skin. So that's why that's there. Yay. So this is what it looks like pinned. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of lift up an area and glue. Just kind of like the sides here. And then slowly glue it down. Let it dry. Take out the pins. And so on. <laughs> this was diff more difficult than I thought. Here's my like hemline there. Lit. So I'm gonna make some scrunchies. Yay. So I have two pieces cut out here. They're four by 16-ish. And then I'm gonna fold them over and of course sew them. So yay. Okay, so now they're sewn together. Now I gotta turn them inside out. So here are my scrunchies after completely sewing it and then turning it inside out and then taking a seven inch piece of elastic tying together and then stitching the ends together just to make sure uh, after threading it through this and then I hand stitched uh, the thing closed and I put a little bit of glue right where the knot is just to make sure to give it extra security. It doesn't really stretch a lot because the elastic I used was kind of an older elastic so the elasticity in it kind of died. But yeah, I got two scrunchies. These will go on to the cute little pigtails I have for the wig and yay! <laughs> Okay, so here's the wig that I'll be doing for Score Bunny. So I kind of already have it a little bit set up how I want it. Um, I'm going to we're going to have like a little bit of a bang here, but also use like a bit of a piece here to add to that length as well as here. Make sure it's a little bit more voluminous. It is going to be a bit shorter, especially right here, but it's going to come about right here maybe. It's a nice little point kind of situation going on and it's gonna be in low pigtails which first I was going to straighten this way because I wanted more of a straight but I really like how the curl is kind of like in a ponytail situation just in a little low pony it's super cute I could put a lot of volume in it and it looked really great I'm going to section off pieces of hair but I'm also going to Kind of just take these pieces, put them into hair ties already, and then proceed on the dyeing process. I'm going to use the same dyeing process I did for the ears, but I'm going to use a lot less of the dye. And I might even use a higher amount of out rubbing alcohol compared to it and just very lightly test it. Because I just kind of want to get a little bit of a tint of color this time. The orange is pretty pigmented as itself, and then hopefully that will work out. Yeah, this hair, I did have a different wig that I was going to use, but that wig kind of just sucked. Um, the tracks were very noticeable. Like, if you kind of just glue a quick glance, you can't barely notice the tracks, which is really nice. You really have to push it through. And the tracks are really thick compared to the other one. So, this was only a couple of dollars more than the other one that I have. And I'll probably take that wig because that one was also shedding really badly when this one's not. I haven't had any shed with this one, which is really nice. Uh, but since that one I had a lot of shedding and stuff, I might just take it apart, use the West for like doll hair or something. So that way it's less likely to shed or whatever. Or use it as like an extension for a different one. But the hair on this one feels very different. It feels plasticky, but it still feels soft. So... Yeah, I'll show you guys the dyeing process, I guess, here soon. Okay, so I am currently outside. I have kind of like parted it into pigtails, and I'm going to go ahead and start the dyeing process. I am outside in the grass because I do not want to stain. Hi, princess! I don't want to stain any of the concrete out here. So, yeah! Okay, so I got my mixture of the various ink with the stuff. 
rubbing alcohol. Yeah. And I'm going to do a quick test wash to make sure it's the color I like. This will probably slowly wear off over time. I'm just trying to get it saturated enough to where it's not going to rub off in one spot. And it's probably going to be done more or less right here. I'm only going to do the tips. That's all. So, here should we go. Hopefully I won't get it everywhere because of the wind. Okay. So, I'm liking the color so far. It looks pretty good. So, time to section out some pieces, and I'm probably going to only do like here. should probably go grab my clips. Got little clips. I'm going to kind of use this part right here as a marker for me, and just kind of like spray, and then just rub through. So you kind of like a tint. might rain. I felt a sprinkle, but it might just on and off rain for a little bit. So I'm hoping this dries quickly. Um, within like the next 30 minutes, I could just bring this out and just put it in the bathtub to let it fully dry. I just need the drip in to stop, and then we'll be good. It's really humid, so it may take a really long time for this to dry. I just need to stop dripping enough, and then put it in like the garage, in their bathroom or something, to let it completely dry. And if it doesn't rain a lot, throughout the day I'll go ahead and do the other ends I really want to get this wig done today at least the dying part but Oklahoma weather may say no god it's humid out here oh okay <laughs> Thank you. 
Alright, so here's the wig. It's looking really freaking cute. I think I am turning into a master wig stylist, at least for more anime cosplay like wigs. I got the bangs, I got them pinned down. They've been pretty saturated with some got to be glued hairspray, which is honestly the best. And then I also teased right here the ponytails to give them a little bit more volume and a little bit more anime vibes i'm gonna cover this part with like a scrunchie that i'm just gonna kind of make real quick um but yeah it's looking really cute i'm trying to find different ways to kind of like keep them at this height got a really nice part yeah looking adorable covered that up nicely Heck yeah, so I'm gonna spray it a little bit more, got to be glued, just kinda set it. I'm gonna leave it like this, with the pins and everything in place until I need to wear it. And then when I put it back on, I'll probably put the pins back and then just got to be glue it down, you know? Just to keep it styled and nice and pretty. Yay! Okay, so after I get all the hair webs done, I have made a ear pattern um which is pretty much just kind of like the shape about a wand the size I want and then I cut out a piece in felt what I'm going to do is I'm going to do four pieces in total and I'm going to stitch them on each side and then just kind of like sew them together with some wire in there and then hope that works out pretty well um pretty much making my own like faux fur kind of thing um one of the sides though, I'm not going to focus too much in the middle because I'm just going to take a piece of fabric, maybe felt or something that's yellow and that's going to be this inner part right here. But yeah, I just cut it out of this felt. This is felt I got from Walmart. Um, the only felt, white felt they had from Walmart had glitter. So I was like, whatever. It's not going to show anyway. So they charge like extra 60 cents for just freaking glitter. That's outrageous. Just saying. But they didn't have any other white glitter in the uh, white felt. And the reason why I picked white felt was because it's just going to work better for um, blending it a bit. Because you don't want like a pink or a red underneath because that will show. So I went ahead and did that. And what I'll probably also do is I'll probably like paint it maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, I will be sewing the little yarn pieces onto this. So, yay. Okay, I want to show you how I am sewing on these weft pieces onto the felt. Um, I already have my needle set up with a little knot at the end. And yeah. I'm not going to go too in-depth with this because I do plan to make another video. I'm, I'm in also the process of making another set of ears and tails. Um, and I'm going more in detail with that one. As well as I'm going by a, a tutorial, which I will link down below from a different person. So yeah, but what you want to do is you want to get your little knot of your fluffy fluff and then you put the needle through, pull it through, stick it in again, do, you got your loop, put through the loop, ba -doop. yay. Now I have lines on mine because I don't want to put too many on here and it just keeps it spaced enough and you don't see the lines anyway and I just did it with pen. So I'm just going in, pulling the needle through the fabric again, then put it through the knot once more, pull, loop, pull, and bam, there it is, right there. Now when I'm putting on the second one, grab the fluffy fluff. Put the needle through the fluff. Try not to stab yourself. Go through the fabric. Then go through the knot of the first one. Pull through. Through the loop. And pull once again. You kind of just keep repeating that. For a cool minute. Okay, now I've sewn like a bit of a line. 
and I'm going to show you how I'm ending the line. Now I still have a lot of thread left so I'm going to continue to the top and basically I just kind of do like a quick ending knot to just kind of keep it in place and from moving around too much. And I'm going to move this down. Where'd my brush go? There's my brush. So I take the brush actually and I kind of just brush it out of the way <laughs> and that way it doesn't get all super tangly as I do it. And I also like flip it because I like sewing a certain way. So I have to flip it every time I do. So what I'm going to do to start the next line is I'm going to actually put the needle and thread through the fabric first and create a knot kind of. So that way it's going to be there and not be moving around anywhere as well as it won't manipulate the fabric so much. And then, yeah, just put needle through. Do, 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 do. Put it there. And then I go in again in the fabric into knot to just make sure it stays in place. Bam! And then you'll just continue that way. It's just a constant pattern. When you get to the end of the needle, though, there's a different way to do it. And I'll show that in just a second. Alright, so now I'm running out of thread, and I can't really do much more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to end with a little knot. So into the fabric, into the little piece. And since I don't have enough to kind of go around, I'm just actually going to go backwards. And bam! Little knot. Cut off the needle, and then tie these in a little knot. Cut off the excess, and yeah, that, that is how you do it. It's all good. So yay! And I got two lines out of that. This is the back piece to an ear. Um, here's pieces of the ear that haven't been worked on. I'm making sure this one's the front. And so it'll look kind of like that. Yeah. And then here's the front that I did. I am going to go through and I'm going to trim up the hairs. The hair, the... It's too long. The hairs are just too long. And I'm going to pretty much whittle them down. Make them look nice. And basically how you do that is you can take a pair of scissors. Which I shall do. These ones are more like a sewing kind of scissor. It came with a bunch of other shears. You kind of just take it. You take the hair like this. And you just go. Eh. I got to. Oh, it's the wrong end. Dang. Okay, hold on. Oh, shit. I gotta do this in my legs. Hold on. It's a weird thing to say. I gotta do this in my legs. So, yeah, I'm gonna grab it. And... and these ones not want to work. Okay, I guess we're gonna use shears. Hope I don't cut myself. Oh, there we go. That works better. So yeah, now I've got it that short. And it's basically what you do. Shears work better than no scissors, so. Okay, I just kind of want to show like the before and after of trimming it. These are the back pieces of the ears. And this is just before what it looks like. Super fluffy, super crazy. And this is after I trim it. And it looks, uh... Pretty good trimmed, pretty good trimmed. I also made sure to kind of like glue the back parts of it where the threads are. So that way it's just not going to fall out or it's less likely to fall out. So yeah, after trimming this, I'll have to dye the tips and then also a patch where the little inner part of the ear is going to be for the front and then just stitch them all together probably using kind of like an invisible stitch kind of method. So yeah. But you can kind of see on the sides the little knots. In the front, you know, you can't really see them. You can feel them. But yeah. Woo. Woo. Fluffy. Okay, so I have used this little piece here that came from this quick pattern I made. And made these little felt pieces, cutting a little bit more on the outside. 
And I'm going to also use these to help mark the points that I need to dye the ears. So I'm going to, I currently only have one that needs to be dyed. Because the other ones need a little work. So here's the center part right here. I'm going to put it here. So that's what it's going to kind of look like. When I'm going to take my markers, the Copic markers I'll use in the colors. I still have the Copic ink refills things so yeah and so the first color which will be right here is this one if you'll focus come on okay, it is yr12 and this will be the first one i'm just going to kind of use the chisel end and kind of like just mark and just a general area and I know from that point on you go up so that way so that way I know when I'm actually dyeing it with the ink and I'm not using straight ink I'm going to mix it with the rubbing alcohol and I know from that point on to just kind of like spray it on that let it saturate uh in I've not done this before and I haven't really seen anyone else do it yet I haven't really looked it up but in my theory the wool will take better to the copic markers and not bleed and not like come off as much because it'll be able it's porous since it's a natural fiber and be able to hold it so yeah i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna mark so it looks like on score bunny it's about right here where it's a little bit on the tip so i'm just gonna mark it there um kind of like both sides and i know from that point on I kind of go with that color. And about that much more, I'm going to use orange, or literally, which is literally the color name, and YR68. And I'm going to use the chisel end of that one, leave a little bit of space right there, and just go boop. And I know that's where the orange will be. So, yeah. So, so now I shall prepare the dyeing process. Okay, it is a little little windy out here, and yeah. So I have I'm getting my box set up here. I'm doing it outside because I don't want to make a huge mess. And yeah, put my gloves on because don't want to deal with those stains on my hands. Put. So I'm doing this in a box because I don't want to get it really any everywhere and it's easier this way and I have plastic wrap because I just don't want it to seep through the box um, and then just I didn't get on the table anyway. The box will help with the splattering and so I have a spray bottle here and I labeled it which one it is so I remember. Now I can always clean it out and use it for a different color but for this purpose we're gonna just focus on using it for this. So I'm not focused on doing a lot for this one because it's just a small, yeah, just a small section. So here I have 70% alcohol. We're going to go with this right now. And then I'm going to open this up. Try not to get it everywhere. And this beautiful drops in, kind of stir it around. It drops in, stir it around. A few more. Stir it around. So, yeah. I think that's pretty good. I barely used... Oh, I got it everywhere, though. I barely used any of it, so... I'm gonna really gonna shake, 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 shake. And then... Yeah. I'm gonna try to have this also... Oh, that's not that area. Um, I'm gonna also try to do a downward angle, so that way it just kind of, like, points down and get close. Okay, so I don't think that is a deep enough yet. So I'm going to go back in and put a little bit more of the Copic Various Ink in here. Just to kind of saturate a little bit more. I don't want to use a lot because I also need this to dye the wig. <laughs>
So I think... It doesn't have to penetrate every single layer. Mainly the top layer. And I'm hoping this works out really well. It's either that or I have to go in and separate each section individually and then just go ham with the Copic markers. And that's going to take too long and I really don't want to do that right now. So... There we go. So I'm gonna leave this be. I'm gonna actually just put this in here to keep it from flying away because I live in Oklahoma and for some reason we are the real windy state. So. so yeah, and then I'm gonna go inside and once this is dry, I'm gonna go back in with a mixture of like rubbing alcohol and the other color, the orange, more orangey, true orange color in a different bottle. So yeah, see you in a moment. Okay, so here's the ears, and this is after them dying, being dyed with the rubbing alcohol and stuff, and it made it kind of crusty, and it took over 48 hours to dry, and I think that's kind of ridiculous. It kind of feels like stale cotton candy. I'm going to try to brush it out, but I don't think it was doing a good job at penetrating the different layers. So what I might do is instead... Um, I might just rinse out what's here and then use a dip dye method with like actual with actual hair dye. Just go to local Sally's, get a little bit of the um, Arctic Fox. Like they have like small little tubes of them and they have like a yellow and then an orange and then I can just mix the yellow and orange together, get more of the orangey color and then that and then getting using a hot water dip dye method and just kind of like dunk it in and hope that works out well so it's either that or going and getting faux fur and making these out of faux fur because there's no way i'm gonna have enough time to redo all this work and do that so yeah so method one didn't really work but that's okay we'll figure out method two so yeah I also feel like with the dip dye method, it will penetrate better because it's just all hot water kind of going in and soaking it. And since wool is like hair and it's porous, it'll soak up that dye. Just that up. So, yeah. And it'll probably dry so much faster because this took over two days to completely dry. But the pigment is like somewhat coming off. So, disappointment. Okie dokie, since the other method wasn't working very well, after dr straining it and cleaning and whatnot, the ears from the rubbing alcohol solution, this is what I have. So what I did is I put the pot with some water on the stove, boiled the water, made it nice and hot, and then I whisked in some dye. I'm using Arctic Fox, and I mixed that initially with some yellow. It didn't have a tiny thing of yellow, so I'm stuck now with a giant thing of yellow. Legit. And I got kind of like this color right here and just dip dyed it. And then afterwards, after dip dyeing them all, I'm like, so this one was the first one, turned out a little yellow, but it's okay. It's fine. We're living with it. But after dip dyeing them all, I pretty much put a little bit, a lot more of the orange in, and then it wasn't really getting darker, so I put little bit of the red panic panic uh, my friend still had from the last time we uh, temporarily dyed her hair. Still vegan, but I put like a, not even a full spoonful, like half a spoonful in there, and it went dark real quick, so I had to put more yellow in there so it wasn't too, too dark. It's not exactly the same color as I would like it to be, but it's very close to the wig over here. So yeah. Is that a beautiful ombre? And as long as it's kind of close to the wig, it's fine. It's close. Not looking to be perfect right now. This is a whole loon learning experience for me. But after dipping each one, I kind of like whisk it. To just kind of like mix it all in. So I'm about to show you how I'm dip dyeing them. So basically, you should have just dip in different color. So I just dip it. Eh. I just dip it a little bit and I get that little band. I may have done that band. Too small. Rip. And yeah, just dip, dip, dip. And let it strain. 
then dip. So pretty much what's happening is since the fibers are porous, it is sucking up all of the dye in there. As much dye as it can hold in the water. And just go with all that dye. So yeah. Bathe a little bit. So yeah, what we'll probably do is just kind of like sit and dry for a little bit, and then throw them in the dryer to completely dry. All right. So as you can see here, I have one ear finished and done. I went ahead and did this one without filming it because I just kind of wanted to go slow on how I was trying to do it. So, but I'm going to show you with the other ear how I kind of accomplish this messy garbage into this not-so-messy garbage. So, yeah. So, first I'm going to actually stitch this piece that I cut out a little bit ago that will be the center part of the ear. And I am using just hand sewing it on with a needle and thread. And I'm using a thread that is similar in color. So... Let's quickly do that. Stop licking the carpet. Thank you. Okay, so now after stitching this down, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue the seam here so that way I can be lazy and not actually um, put forth effort into making sure it's nice. I just want to make sure it stays. I don't have to worry about the knots coming out. And then falling off and not being able to properly fix it without tearing everything apart or just making it look like garbage so yeah fabric tack for the win remember guys when it comes to cosplay it doesn't matter what the inside looks like as long as the outside looks great because this probably inside looks like garbage but the outside looks pretty good so yeah so i'm gonna take the back piece while well, that one's drying i want to set it to the side Hopefully it won't fall on anything. And I'm going to take this piece right here and use it to you to make the wire armature of it. And it's just taking the wire, which I think this is just an aluminum wire. It's very bendy. Where's my pliers? I got my pliers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little bit here and just go boop right there. I'm going to try to leave quite a bit of space so that way... Just take that and go bend. Bend, bend. So just... Okie dokie. Coot. And la bam. I got that. So yeah, now that I got kind of like a wire armature, I'm going to go ahead and stitch certain points and then glue those points down so that way they kind of like just stay and be nice and good. By the way, don't mind the amount of swatches on my hands. I went to Sephora. I needed to test eyeliners. But yeah, I'm going to take my yellow not my yellow, my white thread here, which I need more of. Whoop. And then just string this onto my thingy. Alright, now that I got my thingy threaded, I'm going to start from the corner right here. And then, yeah, just <sighs> do a little quick. Dish is just kind of kind of help it stay in place and then I'll glue it down Okay, so now I'm just going to do it to different points on the wire and then glue them down. Glue down those points so that way it kind of just stays. 
Okay, so here it is kind of stitched. As you can see, I just have some points, and then I glued those down. So hopefully they'll stay. And yeah, I'll let that dry. Okay, so here's it kind of put together. You can see this kind of gap right here, but I'm going to fix that by stitching the ends of each of these little knots together. So that way they just kind of form there. It's just hard to do that when you're first doing the stitch. The stitch I kind of use is like an invisible stitch where I went in onto each side and then kind of cross it over and it kind of folds it on itself. Some are like more in the middle, certain spots which is harder to do than others, like here. But now I'm just gonna kind of like, where'd it go? I'm gonna take this brushy thing that I've been using and just kind of brush it all up, kind of get it to where I want it. This is the one ear with the little floof toof here, so yay. Okay, and to help keep it like that, I'm gonna go back to the spray and give it like quick spritzes and like move it so like and manipulate it with my hands. Kind of get it into spots I want. Like up here, we'll start at the bottom. Actually, we're gonna start from the top because it'll probably be easier that way. And look at that. Look, it's starting to come along. Doing light sprays, but they got to be glued. Because if you don't, it's just going to end up a royal mess. Like my life. <laughs> It'll get too hard and too crusty, but if you do light spritzes and just kind of manipulate it, Okay, so when working on this, I ha I was starting to put it on this headband, um, these ears, but they were flopping over a place. I sewn them together to try to help with that, but it wasn't really working. And I realized, oh, it's because there's nothing really actually attaching it to the headband to keep it sturdy and stiff. So what I'm doing now is opening up just the bottom, but it's okay because I can sew it back pretty easily. And I'm bringing out any wire out, and I'm going to attach more wire to it and then just kind of wrap it around. Now they're still sewn together, so that's fine. And then the fur is getting messed up. It's okay. I can rearrange it, put it back, so... I think that will work. I'm hoping it's working because I only have really just uh, one day. This is my last day until Sooner Con, which I am wearing as cosplay too. So, yeah. Oh, and I have made the tail. The tail was pretty easy. I took all uh, some of the fluff that I still have left over. I still have a lot of the little tuffy webs left over. And I kind of just sewn them together and then put a safety pin in it. And I made sure to leave this part of the safety pin kind of open. And then I just kind of up to where I need to and use the got to be glue hairspray to kind of keep it in place so yeah I can just pin this to the shorts and everything will be good yay cute little tail and also this is me this is what the stocking kind of looks like um, it's just because this fabric isn't like the same stretchy kind of like this fabric, but it will fit around my leg mostly and it'll look flat. And after actually when I had put it to my leg and started gluing, I took it off and then I put it on this. It's just a piece of cardboard that's the same width uh, completely and then that way it stays. This is what the second one looks like. I have glued it all down. So it looks really good. This will be on the inside, so not very noticeable. But yeah, it looks really nice, like this. So just imagine this on the leg, and when I take it off, it's just going to look weird. But while on, it will look really perfectly fine. So yeah. Woo! So as you can see, I'm kind of like taking... Eh, taking some of the wire and just kind of like shoving it in. And then when the existing wire that's already there, I'm kind of wrapping it around. So that way it kind of like stays... And I'm making, trying to make sure to put a little hook here so that way it doesn't accidentally like, stab it in. But, so yeah. So just do, 
I'm putting a good amount of wire in here too, just so that kind of helps support it. So that way if this does not stay, it's fine. Because it will be in there and we'll it's, it's going to be a process. It's going to be a process. I probably should have done this like this first. Yeah, so it kind of extended. This one might not need it, but I'm still going to put an extensor wire on there. And I'm just going to wrap that one around really well. So, yeah. Alright, so I just want to show you kind of like my configuration here. I'm making sure all the little, like, ends of the wires and stuff are facing up and not down. So they don't stab me later. But, yeah. This is kind of like an aluminum wire. So it's very flexible, but it can keep its shape pretty easily. And it takes a little bit more, it takes a little bit of force. So it does... Stand, still stand up pretty well, and I think with a little bit more work and some glue, it will stay perfectly fine. <laughs> so yay! I'm probably going to um, stitch these in real quick, and then also hot glue this area here. So it kind of just keeps it in place while just moving this out of the way. And I might also add um, some more of the little tufts and then cut them off later just to kind of keep this stuff more hidden. All right, so here's what I'm doing so far. Do do do. So what I did is after sewing pretty close more little tuffy thingies, I had kind of like glued those things down so that way they kind of help them stay in place as well as to keep them from fraying and now I'm also going back and taking tuffies and stitching them on to the string and then kind of like putting a little bit of glue down and then just gluing it down a little bit and then stitching it over I just kind of gave it a little bit of reinforcement and keep it in place I don't expect it to stay forever but I expect it to just while well, it's on my head it'll be fine I might put a ribbon down over it to kind of smooth it out I'll look at it but I'll make my decision probably not just because I don't want to do more honestly but I just might just to kind of keep these looking okay okay so it's a little fluffy afterwards but it looks pretty good I'm gonna thin it out and yeah